we need to talk about fashion designer Alexander Wang. He's known for high fashion and hard partying, but his poor choices have started catching up with him. From sweatshops in the city to violating people in the club, this man has taken advantage of anyone who comes his way. And it's unacceptable that the fashion world still accepts this behavior. So let's get into it. Before we get into the horror stories surrounding Alexander Wang, let's talk about who he is, because he's a 37-year-old designer who created his brand back in 2005. His brand is built around hard partying and drugs, and he's the type of guy to go and cast R. Kelly, a known predator in one of his fashion campaigns. But his problematic behavior doesn't stop there, and it picks up in 2012. Right after Alexander accepted the creative director role at Balenciaga, he was exposed for having a sweatshop of his own. Wen Yu Lu was a 56-year-old man who was working 84-hour weeks under Alexander Wang. He decided to sue Alexander for $50 million because at one point he almost passed out at work after being forced to work 25 hours without a break. So Wen Yu Lu tried working with Alexander Wang and actually went to the company to file a complaint over the working conditions. But after filing that complaint, Wen Yu Lu was fired. Keep in mind that this sweatshop is only 200 square feet. It has no windows and is poorly ventilated. And everyone else working there was forced to work 16 hour days or longer without any breaks or overtime. And Wen Yu's lawyer actually described this kind of work as a new type of slavery. And it wasn't long until a second plaintiff came forward. Her name is Floor and she's a 48 year old mother of three. She was working nine the hour weeks in this factory and when she applied for workman's comp she was fired the fashion industry definitely has some problems when it comes to sweatshops it's really disappointing to see how many different brands work in sweatshops and it's not okay how these people are treated so when you lu and floor got together and filed a class action lawsuit against alexander wang and they were suing him for nine counts, $50 million a piece, so totaling up to $450 million that they were suing for. Unfortunately, Alexander never got his day in court, and Wen Yu's lawyer actually said that companies tend to settle outside of court in these kind of cases in order to avoid bad press, so that's what's likely going to happen here. And frankly, that's what happened. On August 14th, 2012, the case was thrown out and dismissed, and actually one of Alexander's spokesmen told the press that we are gratified that this matter has been dismissed, as the allegations were unfounded and completely false, which is something that I don't believe. Because if you think about settlements, a lot of times the person who's being sued or the person who did something wrong, they don't have to take any accountability because they're paying off these people to shut up, to stay silent, and to agree to disagree. So I definitely believe when you and Floor went through hell working with Alexander Wang, but they probably got a pretty penny to shut up and go away. Now let's fast forward and talk about more serious allegations against Alexander Wang. These allegations are completely different than the last ones we were talking about, but just as serious because handfuls of people have come forward claiming that Alexander Wang harmed them. Two Instagram accounts. Model Management and Diet Prada are credited for exposing these allegations against Alexander. It all started to unravel because of this model, Owen Mooney, because he was the first one to come out publicly against Alexander Wang. He posted a TikTok on his TikTok page, and he didn't name Alexander at the time, but let's go ahead and watch his first TikTok. I weird, I guess, being s by one counts, right? Because in 2017, I was in a club in New York City and um, me and a bunch of mates, we went to watch the rapper Cupcake and the club was just like hectic. It was so packed. You could not move. And I was like by myself at one point and this guy next to me obviously like took advantage of the fact that no one could move. And he just started like touching me up, uh, like 
fully like up my leg like in my crotch like it made me like freeze completely because I was in so much shock and then I looked to my left to see who it was and it was this really famous fashion designer and like I just couldn't believe that he was doing that to me it just made me even go into even more shock after Owen posted that video to his TikTok page, a bunch of people were guessing who he could be talking about. And a lot of people got it right that he was referring to Alexander Wang. And then he posted a follow-up TikTok. Previous video, the better thing to do was just to not mention any names. But this comment surprised me just because they actually got it right. And turns out Alexander Wang is a predator. And there's been a load of people that he's done this to. So in that case, he needs to be exposed. People with this type of status, they think that their power like gives them this type of pass to be able to do this to people. But it's so wrong. And like now, anytime I see his name mentioned or it's like I see him with celebrities, their like best friends or whatever, like it just reminds me of what he did and just it's just a really memory to have. So yeah, he just needs to be canceled. After making those TikToks, Owen went to Instagram to further explain what happened to him. Owen wrote that this incident went down in 2017 and pretty much he was at a club and he was trapped in a group of people, which, oh my gosh, that gives me so much anxiety because clubs and a lot of people like, oh, it stresses me out. Too much going on. But anyways, Owen was stuck in this club and Alexander Wang was right next to him and started rubbing up on his leg and then got to his crotch and started grabbing. After Owen was able to escape from Alexander Wang, he ran off with his friends and later on he saw him again. And Alexander's friend actually went and pushed Alexander into Owen, trying to get Owen's attention. Kind of like how, you know, we act in high school at the playground where if a girl likes a guy, you know, the, the girl friends push the girl into the guy to catch his attention. Well, that's what happened between Owen and Alexander. Owen goes on to claim that the reason why he's speaking out now, almost four years later, is because a bunch of other people have also gone through this with Alexander. He wants to make it known that Alexander Wang is a predator, and he wants the fashion industry to recognize that this man is problematic. Well, after Owen came forward with his story, it inspired other people to come forward and speak about their experiences with Alexander Wang. After hearing Owen's story, a man named Nick Ward, who works for a construction company in New York, came out and claims that that same year that Owen was touched by Alexander Wang, he was grabbed as well. They were at the Brooklyn Mirage nightclub in the early hours of September 10th, 2017, and he claims that Alexander Wang got a little bit too touchy and grabbed him in his private area. Nick claims that it was shocking. It definitely sobered him up a bit. I was like, holy crap. He he grabbed me, squeezed me, and kept moving forward through the club without missing a beat. But Alexander Wang and his team loves to deny, 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 and actually claims that he was at a fashion show until 3 a.m. that night, and this could have never happened. They also claim that Nick Ward's story isn't adding up because Nick had recently invited Alexander to go clubbing with him just that past Saturday, so if Nick was harmed by Alexander in any way, then why is he, you know, texting him all friendly and wishing him happy birthday and such? So Alexander can deny, deny, deny as much as he'd like, but there are just far too many people coming forward for them all to be lying. Like one of his former friends, Azalea Banks, actually took to her social media to expose what she knew about Alexander. Azalea started sharing other people's stories on her page, like this one from a trans woman who claims that Alexander and his friend Ryan Corbin actually came to a party and grabbed her breast, which was really hurtful and sensitive because she was on hormones at the time, and another one of her friends, another trans woman, tried to to help fight 
them off, fight Alexander and Ryan off. But at that same time, they pulled down her panties, like their friend's panties, and it was all way too much. This message that Azalea shared claims that they knew of three incidents of Alexander Wang going and harming trans women. It seems like this man, Alexander, just thinks that he's so powerful that he can go and grab anyone's privates at any time. Let's actually go and visit that Instagram page model management because they posted a whole bunch of stories about Alexander on the day that they and Diet Prada decided to expose him. I believe the goal of posting all of these on social media is to bring awareness to Alexander's behavior and possibly save people and protect people from him taking advantage of them in the future. This person claims that their straight friend was harmed by Alexander in the club one night because Alexander got pretty drunk and then one thing led to another and this guy was taken into a room with Alexander where he started trying to take off his pants and give him a BJ. This person claims that they were actually drugged by Alexander because he did the whole molly water trick which I'm assuming you're you put like molly into water and have people drink it and this person's actually bipolar and the molly sent them into a manic episode followed by psychosis. His smug prank literally put me in the hospital for weeks and ruined my career. This person claims they met Alexander at a bar one night and he was really pressuring them to drink out of this huge bottle of vodka. Their only memory is being dragged outside of the bar into a taxi and then they don't remember anything else until they woke up and saw that Alexander was in bed with them. They had their pants off and things were going on. It's all really gross and they actually had a gash in their eyebrow area from the bottle because he supposedly hit them with the bottle trying to pressure them to drink and it cut their eyebrow and you know their skin open. They wrote, it was so scary waking up there, very lost, which that does sound really scary. I mean, you're at a bar in New York City and then this fashion designer, famous fashion designer come up to you and he wants to drink and party and then the next thing you know, you're being dragged out by him into his home to be violated by him. It also seems like Alexander has an issue when it comes to preying on straight men because literally this one guy was convinced to go back to Alexander's apartment for an after party. But of course, Alexander got him way too messed up, so drunk, and he tried to take his clothes off. But the friend made up an excuse about having an emergency and left his apartment immediately. Lucky for that person, they were able to get out of the apartment and get away because I guess they were messed up, but not too messed up. Thankfully, that person wasn't roofied, but this person claims that he roofied two of their friends in 2014. Obviously, these are all just Instagram messages, so we can't really confirm or deny any of them, but there are a lot of different stories and they all seem pretty similar. Since a lot of people were coming forward against Alexander Wang, Lisa Bloom, an American attorney, decided to go and represent those people people. You guys may remember her because she represented the victims against Harvey Weinstein and she's very familiar with this type of work. It's not exactly clear how many of Alexander's victims she represented, but at one point she had 10 men on her case. In another article, I read 11, so she was representing a lot of people, including this man, David Casavant, a stylist and fashion archivist. David alleges that Alexander actually went and pulled down his trousers and his underwear during an encounter with the designer at a Brooklyn nightclub in January 2017. It seems like a lot of crap went down in 2017 and Alexander was just going around New York City touching whoever he wanted to. David was motivated to come out publicly against Alexander because he saw that the fashion industry wasn't doing anything about these allegations brought against him. And he believes it's because most of them were anonymous and we don't really know who are making these accusations against 
Alexander, but he said, that's fine. I'm going to put out my name and put myself forward so that you guys can see that I'm not anonymous anymore and that I've been harmed by this man and I want you guys to do something about it. David's testimony draws attention to a harsh truth regarding how quiet fashion continues to be in its response to so many allegations. He believes that it's our collective responsibility to listen to those who come forward and to make sure that Alexander Wing doesn't do this to anyone else. There are three more victims I want to talk to you guys about before I tell you how this story ends. Gia Garrison is a transgender model and actress. And actually that same year in 2017, I don't know what was going on in 2017, like what was in Alexander's water, but in February 2017, he tried to pull pull down Gia's panties and expose her private parts in the VIP area. She claims it was just another night and then I remember being introduced to Alexander Wang and then chatting to him. I just remember dancing around and he was chilling with his friends and then he tried to reach for her bikini bottoms and tried tugging them downwards. Gia said, what are you doing? What the F? and then stepped away. I didn't make much of it in the moment because I was just in club mode and tried to let those things, you know, brush off my shoulder and not ruin my night. But since then, Gia has done many shoots where they've wanted to put her in his clothing and she says no because of that night. But of course, Alexander and his lawyers all, um... Deny, deny, deny. I mean, he should honestly have that tattoo. Deny, deny, deny until the day you die. Now let's talk about Alexander's next victim. He was a 21-year-old student who met Alexander back in 2019. He was a student at New York's Parsons School of Design, which actually that's where Alexander Wang went to. When I was doing my research on him, yeah, that's where he went to school. So he was going to school there, but he met Alexander at a club in the city. The student's name is Keaton, and he claims that he completely froze when this interaction went down. He was actually 20 at the time and they were at the Fishbowl Club in New York City and he encountered Alexander Wang on August 24th, 2019 at around 11.30 p.m. Keaton actually has a photo from that night. As you guys can see, Alexander is in the middle. It looks like maybe Keaton's got a friend who's behind them and then Keaton, I'm assuming, is in the white shirt right up front taking the picture with Alexander. Well, Keaton Keaton told BBC that they started off talking about their school because like I just said, they both went to the same school of design in lower Manhattan. And then Alexander invited the pair, so I'm assuming Keaton and his friend, to their table and offered them vodka by the bottle before eventually leading them to the dance floor. In the early hours of the morning, Keaton claims that Alexander harmed him. All of a sudden, he unzipped my trousers and put his hands in my pants and started grabbing his private areas in front of a bunch of people, he said, I completely froze. Alexander then told Keaton, I want to take you home with me, which could you imagine how he was feeling? I mean, Keaton was probably like, get me the hell out of here. And that's what happened. He said, I felt weirded out and removed myself from the situation as fast as possible. What a horrifying situation. I mean, can you imagine being at the club and then meeting a huge fashion designer? You're like, oh my gosh, like, Alexander Wang, I can't even imagine. And then moments later, he's getting you drunk and then in your pants, grabbing you in front of everyone. It is so bizarre to me how he feels so confident violating people in public. And again, there's one more person we need to talk about before I tell you how this story ends. So a young man named Nick, who didn't want his last name to be published, also came forward to the media about what happened to him one night in August 2017 after meeting Alexander Wang. Again, what is going on with like 2017? Like, holy crap. Anyways, Nick was quoted saying that he blacked out at one of these clubs and found Alexander giving him a HJ, like getting physical and touching his private area without any consent. The second time I blacked out in our Uber. So I guess he blacked out at the club with Alexander and he was getting all handsy. And then somehow this guy, Nick, got into the Uber with Alexander and he woke up in the car with... <sighs> with Alex literally putting his mouth on his private area and doing things that he did not want to do. 
He said that he feels so embarrassed and manipulated by the situation. But again, Alexander's lawyers absolutely deny these claims. Since Alexander and his lawyers have been denying all of these allegations, you would think that they would be excited to go and take this to court and prove all of these people wrong and to save Alexander's reputation. Because at this point, I mean, people know that he's some type of predator. So he needs to go and prove each one of these people wrong and then clear his name. I mean, that's what he should do, right? I mean, if he was innocent, Yes, but actually, Lisa Bloom was representing a bunch of these people, and it seems like they worked out a deal outside of the courtroom. On March 8th, 2021, Lisa Bloom tweeted out, We have met, we, we have met with Alexander Wang and his team. My clients had the opportunity to speak their truth to him and express their pain and hurt. We acknowledge Mr. Wang's apology and we are moving forward. We have no further comment on this matter. As someone who covers stories like this on my channel, I've never seen someone like Alexander walk away and get away with everything. He must have so much money in his bank account ready to go pay off these people for their silence. So it's not like we ever get any closure to the situation. It's like, okay, all these people got together, they got representation, and then representation just kind of worked it out with Alexander. And then we we don't really hear anything else. I mean, we don't know how much he paid them off. We don't know what type of charges could have been brought forth. But Alexander did take to social media to release an apology. And he wrote, A number of individuals have come forward recently to raise claims against me regarding my past personal behavior. I support their right to come forward. And I've listened carefully to what they had to say. It was not easy for them to share their stories. And I regret acting in a way that caused them pain. Pretty much admit to doing that but then he writes while we disagree on some of the details of these personal interactions i will set a better example and use my visibility and influence to encourage others to recognize harmful behavior life is about learning and growth and now that i know better i will do better which i feel like oh, now that you know better i mean more more like now that you've been caught because if you did not know better before then that is like i mean who thinks that they have the right to go and just unzip people's pants on the public dance floor and put their hand in there and mess around? He doesn't even know these people. It's actually disgusting that he feels so comfortable taking advantage of strangers out in public. I'm sure he will do better next time. And the only reason I believe that he's apologizing now is because he's been caught and there are so many people who have come forward against him that if he wanted to save his reputation in any way, he needed to get rid of them and issue this blanket apology. It's still really scary to me how he is like in the top of his game in the fashion world and how... None of these allegations from the sweatshops to him you know, grabbing people in public, nothing has really stopped him in the fashion world. And I think that speaks volumes about the industry and how they let these things slide. He's walking away with no criminal charges after harming a bunch of different people. And that's because he was able to go and pay them off and settle outside of court, which I understand these people taking the money. I probably would, too, because who wants to go into the courtroom with this guy who's been denying everything this entire video, but then acknowledges that he's done some things wrong at the very end in his apology. I mean, mm, yeah, no, it's a little too late for me, especially when you've got your lawyers over here trying to discredit every victim who's come forward. And now you're over here saying, oh, well, you know what? Uh, I, I probably shouldn't have acted in this way. Yeah, it's about time. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I made it because you guys emailed me. So if you have any other video ideas for me, here's my email below. But let's go ahead and check out this PL box package item. If you guys have ever, if you guys ever have any um small brands or anything you want me to, you know, give you a little shout out on uh, on my videos, I've got my PL box listed below. But this one, it looks like it's from um. What says we never put you in a box? Boxes are for cereal. So I'm like, is it cereal? I don't know. Like, I know that that's probably a dumb question because I'm like, is it cereal? What is this? Let's go ahead and see. <gasps> what is this? Oh my gosh, is it cereal? Oh my gosh. Off limits. What is this? <gasps> is this like a... Did someone just send it to me? Is there like a letter? Wow, okay. Well, I'm going to have to try this out. It looks like they're... Oh my god, zombie flavor. 
They sent me a bunch of cereals. I wonder why. I'm kinda here for it though. Okay. Coffee cereal. I'm actually allergic to coffee, so that's not gonna work. Okay. And then let's see. Oh my gosh, think about a note right here. Okay. In a world of rules, we do what's off limits. We imported this rare edible glitter from the cartoon dimension. Oh, milk first, then glitter. Oh, it's edible glitter. This is so random and cool. Wow. Thank you, off limits. If you guys want to go and check out their cereal, it'll be listed below. But here's another one too. Oh my gosh, this one's called Spark Strawberry Cereal. <gasps> Look at this. I'm so excited, guys. I love cereal. And this seems like a legit brand. So thank Thank you so much off limits for sending me this cereal i really appreciate it and i can't wait to try it out and i'll let you guys know on instagram how it is but thank you so much and i'll see you guys in a new video soon bye guys